Salute 1 was the first ever crewed space station. The name translated from Russian means salute and was the first of nine planned salute missions. The information gained benefited the construction of further space stations like the Mir or the ISS, and these even used further developed versions of the salute for some of the modules. The construction of a Soviet space station began in 1964, initially planned as ALMAS or internally OPS. Orbitalna Pilotirma Stanza for manned orbital station as military reconnaissance. But because the development took longer than expected, they decided to develop a civil space station for research purposes parallel to the Almas. The developers took the mostly finished hull of the OPS and used Soyuz technology. The result was the DOS Dolgovremina Orbitalna Stanza for long-term orbital station, which launched 1971 as Salute 1. DOS-1, the first ever space station, had an empty mass of 18,425 kilograms. The total length was about 20 meters and it had a maximum width of about 4 meters. You can split it in four main parts, three of which were pressurized, adding up to a total of 99 square meters, pressurized the volume. This transfer compartment was equipped with the only docking port of the station, which for the first time used a probe and drogue type that allowed internal crew transfer. It had a diameter of 2 meters. The next two sections are where the crew spent most of their time. They are the small and large diameter workstations. They had a diameter of about 3 and 4 meters. The last section with a diameter of about 2 meters is the propulsion module and was not pressurized. It contained the engine installations and associated control equipment. This is a modified version of the Soyuz service module. Another part of Soyuz technology are the station's two pairs of extendable solar panels for power generation located on each end. The space station lifted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in today's Kazakhstan on April the 19th, 1971, at 1.40 am UTC. The launch vehicle was a three-stage Proton K. In this video you can see a Proton K launch with a Radica satellite. The initial orbit had a perigee of 200 km and an apogee of 222 km. In comparison, the ISS orbits at around 400 km. Salute 1 needed 88.5 minutes to complete a single orbit. Soyuz 10, or translated Union 10, was launched four days later to dock with the station. The spacecraft was the first of the upgraded Soyuz, featuring the new probe and drogue docking mechanism with internal crew transfer capability. Commander Vladimir Shatalov, Alexei Yelizev and Nikolai Rukavishnikov were able to navigate a vehicle to the station and achieve soft dock, but it failed to achieve hard dock due to latching issues and it was not possible for the crew to enter the station safely. The mission was aborted and the cosmonauts were able to return to Earth safely after two days in space. Soyuz 11 or Union 11 however successfully docked to the Salute station. It launched on the 6th of June 1971 and arrived at the space station only one day later. The crew consisting of Georgi Dobrovolsky, Viktor Patsayev and Vladislav Volkov were able to transfer to the station and conduct all planned experiments and tasks. Those included checking the onboard systems, testing the station's manual and autonomous navigation systems, 
studying Earth's surface geology and geography, as well as medical biological studies to determine the feasibility of having cosmonauts in the station perform various tasks and the influence of spaceflight on the human organism. The mission was planned to be 25 to 30 days long. However, the duration of the mission cut short by a few days because of problems with the station, including the treadmill causing vibrations and a minor electrical fire. After 22 days docked and 382 orbits, the capsule decoupled on June 29, 1971, to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Unfortunately, the breathing ventilation valve located between the orbital module and the descent module opened during separation. The two were held together by explosive bolts designed to fire sequentially, but because of a technical error they fired simultaneously. The force of this caused the internal mechanism of the pressure equalization valve to loosen a seal that was usually discarded later and normally allowed to automatic adjustment of the cabin pressure. The valve opened at an altitude of 168 kilometers and the gradual loss of pressure was fatal within seconds. After this disaster all cosmonauts were required to wear pressurized spacesuits during lifter, docking maneuvers and re-entry. This required the redesign of the Soyuz capsule to be able to wear spacesuits and house the life support system required for these. To have enough room for that, one of the seats got removed and only in 1980, with the Soyuz T, it was possible again to see three people. The first manned flight after this disaster was two years later on the 27th of September 1973 with Soyuz 12. The station was moved into a higher orbit in July and August 1971 to ensure it wouldn't be destroyed through orbital decay. But Salute 1 had a planned mission duration of only 3 months and couldn't be refueled. Because of that it ran out of supplies before the new Soyuz version was ready and re-entered Earth's atmosphere according to plan on the 11th of October 1971 over the Pacific Ocean and burned up. In total the station was 175 days in space and orbited Earth 2929 times. It traveled a distance of 118,602,524 kilometers. That is the distance from Earth to the Moon about 300 times. Even though Salute 1 had a lot of problems, it was still a milestone in the progress of spaceflight and especially space stations. The next five successful Salute missions greatly benefited from the knowledge gained and a further developed version of the Salyut station, DOS-7, was used as the core module for the Mir space station, as well as the DOS-8 for the Zvezda service module, which was together with the Zarya module, the early core of the International Space Station. If you want to learn more about those, click one of the links currently on screen or in the description. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something interesting.